Welcome back to Fire to Fork and welcome to a new series that I'm going to call Friday Beers. Uh, it's not actually Friday, I'm filming this on a Wednesday, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, this is my backyard, so that's Sam's Subaru, this is my house, uh, this is our back deck and um, look at the moment in most places in Australia it's fire ban. Um, so I thought why would I teach you guys how to cook on fire in places you're not allowed to when in a lot of places you're allowed to have a charcoal barbecue or a solid fuel stove. I'm not talking about a fire, a fire is a different thing, a fire is big and unruly. A contained solid fuel cooking fire is a completely different thing. It's called a solid fuel stove. So you do it in a fire pit, you do it in, uh, this is the patio bri behind me. This is a little hibachi grill that I've got. Um, I've got a pizza oven. I've got all different devices that I'm gonna be using in this series. And I thought, why don't I show you guys what I cook in my backyard? Now, how does this differ from my normal episodes? Well, number one, there's more road noise. So that's a big one. Uh, but number two is I can use multiple fridges i can use the fact that i have a normal stove or a normal oven and the fact that i have a dishwasher so i'm not scared of using more bowls and things like that i'm not trying to desperately save water i'm not trying to use super long life ingredients because i can just go to the shops the day of so that is the big difference here is that i can utilize all these different things but that more than anything these are crowd pleasers that i like to cook and tonight's episode is going to be on teriyaki chicken actually because it's something that people associate with takeaway, and it's also something that people don't associate with the barbecue, but the best place to cook teriyaki chicken is on coals. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Start off with, let's light a fire. To light um, a charcoal hibachi grill like this, it's really easy. I'm gonna grab a couple of tinder shreds, or just, you can just use fire lighters, some sort of a fire sauce. Grab a few lumps of charcoal. This bag of charcoal, funnily enough, is the same one that I bought when I went down south to go and do that episode with Trip in a Van. So I've had it for ages, it was months ago. In fact, that was probably near on a year ago. All right, a couple of these. Light it up. And that's it. We'll just leave that for about, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like that. All right, it's been about five minutes. So <clears throat> this is starting to sort of glow red. Um, so it's got some lit bits, some not lit bits, but it's still, it's still warm on top. So we'll leave that for a little bit longer, but in the interim, let's start this sauce. So the sauce is a pretty easy one. Um, I never remember all the ingredients, so I actually use my own book because it's the same sauce I use for the teriyaki beef. So, and I usually try and make one or, uh, sorry, one and a half or two times the recipe so that it, there's a little bit left over because it keeps quite well in the fridge. So, 60 mil of mirin, and we'll go for one and a half times the recipe. This is a half cup, so this to two thirds, should be about 90 mil. Mirin is a kind of a, sticky, sweet rice wine sort of thing. Then 60 mils of sake, so which is a quarter of a cup, so half of this cup measure. Uh, you don't have to go and get good sake from a bottle shop. You can get this just, this is like three or four dollars from the supermarket. Just get cheap cooking sake. That's spelt like sake, S-A-K-E, S -A -K -E. there we go. And 180 mils of soy. All of these amounts will be in the video description as usual with a full recipe and everything that you can follow. I reckon there's probably 180 mils left in this bottle. Mm. Not quite. I mean, sorry. Yeah, a little bit more than 180 mils left in that bottle, so it's good. Now, oh, I didn't bring a knife. That's useful. Okay, so I'm only doing small stuff, so I use the petty knife is a paring knife from Osbro. Uh, you don't have to peel this ginger fully, but I do like to um, just take a bit of the skin off. Um, but some skin in this sauce is no problem at all. Bit of a knob of ginger. Grab my grater and just get that in there. 
Now, I know you're going to be asking about this hibachi grill. Um, this is by a company called Firemate. There's nothing on the internet about them, uh, but we are planning to put them on the website very soon. So keep your eyes peeled. They are also act as a smokeless fire pit. They're just incredible. They're not at all a cheap device because they're handmade and they're stunning. All right, so probably uh, one and a half centimeters of ginger grated in there. And we'll grab like a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh, and this table I'm cutting on, although I have this hibachi on, um, is actually aluminium. I know it looks plastic, but it's an aluminium table. So that's why I'm not worried about it burning, but it doesn't actually get very hot on, underneath it. Last but not least, one and a half teaspoons of sugar. And we'll just stir that up. Now, if you can't be bothered doing that, which is fair enough, go and buy some pre-made teriyaki sauce and just grate in a little bit of ginger and garlic. And it is incredible how close that comes to this. I recommend the Kickerman brand as a, like a, an easy kind of like accessible one. Um, but there are a whole bunch of different ones. Let's just try that. That's beautiful. Now you can put, the, I'd usually just put this on the stove inside, but this is right here. Um, uh, we're just gonna boil that for a few minutes and simmer it away and just slightly reduce it basically. It was been about half of a beer later. Oh, delightful. Um, <clears throat> There is a heap of heat up here. It's not, not like crazy, I'm gonna sear a Wagyu or sear a steak on there. It's not that hot. It's just still very hot. So that's been simmering for about five or 10 minutes. Now, what we do is we get our chicken and I've gone for a skin on boneless thigh. I'm not even gonna put these in the breadboard. So you don't have to worry about the food safety police on the internet. Um, just gonna throw that straight on the heat. I reckon we get three of these on here. You can see they're all flayed out and they're quite flat, which is perfect. Close that bottom vent. Then we want to baste. Also, please bear in mind, Yes, this is touching raw chicken and that's going back in, but it's also boiling hot the whole time. So it's hot enough to kill all those germs. And at the end, I'll reboil this mixture. So this is basically on the edge of boiling right now. Oh, I didn't bring tongs. What a muppet. Oh, that's too slow to turn. Okay, it's got good grill marks on it positive. So you want to just baste and then immediately flip. This is also great to do just on a normal grill, um, sorry on a normal like fire, but with um, just do it in the Osprey because then nothing sticks to the hot plate and you can flip all three at once. Or you can probably flip about six at once actually. So it's literally just as long as it takes to grill, as long as it takes to baste is how long you baste for. So how long between flips, I mean. And you can see that one was a little bit hotter than that, so I'll switch those two around. Now you shouldn't ever marinate this in teriyaki. It just doesn't taste as nearly as good. Actually adds a kind of a weird flavor. And these burnt bits, uh, so I remember when I did my original teriyaki beef recipe, I had this, frankly, real, really nasty commenter told me I had no idea how to cook that I should go and go do a TAFE course and anyway she got to me a little bit he was a bit of a, was a real prick <clears throat> and um told me that the blackening of the teriyaki would be acrid and horrible and bitter and would the whole meal must taste like crap he's clearly never had anything charred properly um, because I can tell you that the black bits on this are by far the best bits of the meal Clearly never had a well seared steak. Fred, go away. These days I don't care about comments. 
but back then I did, I just started. So you can see the skin is crisping up a little bit faster than the meat. So I'm just going to leave it on the meat side down for a little touch longer on this turn. And if you need to, you can just take these off and rest in between. Take them off the heat for a second. That's no problem at all. All right, I'm going to take them off and rest them for a sec. While I do that, I've just got some asparagus. I've already chopped, chopped the ends off. So I'm just going to basically throw these on here for a few seconds. Because I've also deliberately picked the thinnest bunches of asparagus because they cook through quicker. So when you're cooking on high heat like this, you can't, um, you can't have anything that's going to burn too quickly. And just for a bit of fun, I've got just a couple of bits of spring onion, which I like to char up. Oh, nearly lost one. Paint that with a bit of the good stuff. Oh, by the way, if you use gluten-free soy in this um, teriyaki sauce, it is gluten-free. Just get the good quality mirin um, and it'll be a gluten-free sauce because my wife is celiac and she's having this for dinner. So it was kind of a sad looking spring onion, so it's quite a good use for it. Not quite done. That's fine. We'll just chuck that back, back on for a few seconds. And um, this is the thing, you can rest it in between if it is starting to sear too much. But don't be, still don't be shy with heat. <clears throat> and if you want to be absolutely sure that your chicken is cooked, you want the magical 69 degrees inside. You get a meat thermometer. So I might just grab one of them. So that's 68, 69, 69 degrees, yeah. Take that off. And you want to stick this in the thickest part always. Yep, it's in the 70s. <clears throat> so this one's only 60 in there, this thickest part. It's fine. Just keep cooking this one for a few seconds. Chop up a little bit of spring onion for some garnish. And a little bit of rice. We cooked inside, just normal sushi rice, get it from Coles. Um, cooked like normal rice, one and a half cups of water to one cup of rice. Okay, that chicken looks perfectly cooked. I like to cut it into strips because I like to eat it with chopsticks. So, cut it into sort of bite-sized pieces. I want some of this really charred one actually. God, this is so tender. As you can see inside, it's perfectly cooked. Some asparagus. Nice and charry. A couple of bits of spring onion. More spring onion. Then I'm going to get some of this Japanese seasoning, which I put down somewhere, which is over here. Fred, go away. This stuff is just awesome. Nori kumi furikake. That stuff. It's really good. Then I'm going to feed the camera with some gratuitous B-roll and I'm going to eat this. sauce on top soak in that rice beautiful I 
It's as good as teriyaki gets. That is just phenomenal. All right. Also, I apologize for my previous pork adobo episode where I mentioned chopsticks for a Filipino dish. I know that Thai and Filipinos don't use chopsticks. They use knives and forks and spoons. So me wanting to is just stupid. The Japanese do though. Don't forget to comment the code word in the episode. And does it go well with beer? Oh, so very well. So very well. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this start of episode. And I'll see you in the next one.